Hi, in the previous modules, we told you how you can use WordPress. So now you should be ready to start building your site. But before you do, in this module, we want to tell you more about WordPress. We'll tell you how it all began and how its community helped it thrive and grow. In this video, I will take you on a quick tour of WordPress's evolution. We will see how, over time, a 19-year-old blogger's attempt to improve his own blogging experience turned into the most used CMS in the world. But this is not just a story about one man's success. It is a story about how cooperation and a community effort can lead to creating great things. So, let's begin. It all started back in 2003. Matt Mullenwag liked taking photos and sharing them online. He used an open source blogging platform that was popular back then called B2 Cafe Log. At that point, Matt was already blogging for some time. His blog was getting attention and visits were increasing. But there was a problem. The developer stopped updating back in B2 Cafe Log and he could not be reached. Matt was a blogger, so the first natural thing that came to him was to blog about it. In the historical post Blogging Software Dilemma, he wrote that he was considering taking matters into his own hands and using the B2 Cafe Log code to fork the software. I know what you may be thinking now. What is this software forking business? So let's pause the story for a second and see what it means. Software can be divided into branches that stem from the same root but go their separate ways, like a fork in the road. In open source software, developers can take source code, copy it, and create a totally different piece of software. That is how WordPress came to be, as a fork of B2 Cafe Log. Okay, back to the story. Mike Little, a developer, noticed Matt's post and commented that he would like to jump in on his idea of forking B2. And that was it. That is how the two began writing the first page of WordPress history. Of course, WordPress did not magically become the CMS we know and love today. It went through a really massive evolution over the years. To give you an idea of just how massive these changes were, let's take a look at the most prominent WordPress versions and how they evolved. Note that we mention the most significant changes, but each version came with many more different features that we just don't have the time to name here. Our journey begins with WordPress version 0.7. What you see here is what WordPress looked like at the beginning. Looks quite different, don't you think? Back in that version, there was not much you could do besides blog. There was not even a dashboard in this version. Basically, all you could do was write a post, set its visibility and comment options, and put it in a single category. You could not even view your posts in the front at this point. Now, we all have our reasons why we love WordPress, but almost everyone agrees that features such as plugins, widgets, and themes are what make it so cool. So where are they in this evolutionary timeline? Plugins made their appearance, as we know them today, almost a full year after the launch of WordPress. The version 1.2 that introduced a robust plugin system was called Mingus, after Charles Mingus, the American jazz bassist, pianist, and composer. Fun fact, Matt studied jazz and he's a passionate jazz fan, and so are many other core contributors. So almost each WordPress version is named after a jazz legend. It took another year and a few updates for the plugin repository to be created in version 1.5. This version also brought an improved and extended theme system and it introduced the dashboard. Still, the look of WordPress was quite far from what we know today. The first significant redesign of the backend user interface came at version 2.0, named after Duke Ellington, in 2005. In the two years that followed, the updates focused on fixing bugs and security issues. In the 2.2 version of 2007, which is around the time I started to contribute to WordPress myself, WordPress got its widgets. Its successor, version 2.3, called Dexter, made it possible to add tags to posts. You, so you see by now that changes were happening slowly and systematically, and they were no longer based only on the needs of a couple of individuals. A community with ideas and a willingness to dedicate time to WordPress was forming. In 2008, WordPress got some heavy makeup on the user interface, and it began to look more like its present version. 
In 2008, the new release 2.7, called Coltrane, introduced an admin menu that resembles the one we have today. This version was a great departure from the first version that appeared in 2003. All this change, the multiple improvements and updates, would not have been possible without the growing community. In 2010, 218 contributors worked on version 3.0, which was a great turning point in WordPress history. Version 3.0 brought custom post types and custom taxonomies. By this point, it was undeniable that WordPress had grown out of its blogging platform origins and it was morphing into a powerful CMS. It was also around this time that WordPress got a mobile app for on-the-go posting and editing. We fast forward to 2013, when the 3.8 Parker version brought a brand new design. And if you look at this screenshot, you can probably already see glimpses of the latest, current version. In the years that followed, dedicated WordPress developers worked tirelessly on major and minor improvements to the user experience and security. Recently, the release of WordPress 5.0 shook up the WordPress world. Why was that? Because the new block editor replaced the beloved classic editor you wrote posts and pages in. If you are new to WordPress, the classic editor will not mean much to you, but for people who have been with it, with it from the start, it was a dramatic change. So what was the famous classic editor like? It was actually much like Microsoft Word or another word processing software. And that made it kind of easy to use due to its familiar functionalities. But it also came with some of the frustrations you see in the word processing software world. Have you ever tried to align images and text to appear side by side and repeatedly failed until you gave up in frustration? Well, that would happen in the classic editor as well. If you wanted to add a button in the classic editor, you would need to use some code. If you need a table, you'd need to get a plugin. With the new block editor, also known as Gutenberg, you can do everything with blocks. You need text and images side by side? No problem, use the media and text block. You want to add a table or a button? Sure, no sweat, use the button or table blocks. Each content element has its own block and it makes the editing of the content super easy. If you followed our course, I'm sure you saw how easy it is to create content with the block editor. Even more exciting is that the Gutenberg block editor is just the start of a much grander project. The next big change should affect page templates, and in the final stage, WordPress will become a full site customizer. So the future shines bright for WordPress as new features appear on the horizon. When you look back at how WordPress started and what it has grown into, you can see that the changes have indeed been quite dramatic. It began as a joint effort of two like-minded individuals, and it steadily grew its base of contributors. WordPress 5.0, Bebo, has 432 contributors listed. That's 432 people that made a meaningful contribution to just one release. In later videos in this section, you'll also learn about WordCamps, the conferences about WordPress, which have grown to huge conferences with thousands of people celebrating and collaborating on and with WordPress. With continuously improved features, the number of users naturally grew as well. WordPress currently powers approximately 34.5% of all websites on the web. This makes it more than 12 times bigger than the second biggest CMS. So, remember when I mentioned in the beginning that this is a story about the power of community? I think that's what WordPress is a textbook example of starting small and becoming a giant that continues to grow. In the next lesson, we will learn more about the WordPress community, how it came to be, and how it is thriving.